So a lot of times we talk about taking a soil sample and sending it off to the lab now that's a good thing. But sometimes it's forgotten about the proper method about going about when collecting that soil sample and the importance of following a proper method as so you can send something accurate to the lab. The reason why this is so important is the lab is only as good as the sample you provide them. It's your responsibility to follow the proper sample technique to ensure the results the lab provides are representative of your field conditions. The lab's going to test the soil that you send them and give you results. Your goal is to make sure that's representative of your field so that the results that they give you are, can be applied to your exact particular situation. Now, how to properly correct a soil sample? There's kind of a few different ways. Uh, I like to use kind of a simple way. Uh, my step one is to collect something you can core the soil with. And typically a 16 inch piece of inch and a half PVC pipe works great. It's easily found. Uh, it's inert. So again, this is a great um, tool to have. Then I take a five gallon pail. You may need to add a plastic bag to ensure there's no contamination depending what that bag or that pail was used for previously. You want a clean bag so you're getting a clean sample. I take a large hammer for pounding the PVC pipe into the ground. So I got a PVC pipe, I got a five gallon pail, which usually has a bag liner, and I, I have a large hammer. Step two is to mark gradations on that PVC pipe, so you know where 6, 8, 10, maybe even 12 inches are. Your goal is to get a soil sample of 6 to 8 inches deep, depending on the soil type, you may want to go deeper. So I kind of have 6 as that minimum if you hit a rock or something. If I can get down to 6 to maybe 9 inches, that's great. Uh, I really don't want to go much over 12. Uh, step three would be walk randomly over your growing area, taking about a dozen or so cores or samples that we place in your 5-gallon pail. Be sure to avoid potential biases such as corners, edges, or areas of uneven fertilization. The whole point here is you want that representative sample. You don't want to just walk from one corner right down the line and take all your cores this way. You kind of want to take one maybe from the middle, one over here, one over here, come back around, take some over here. It kind of gives you that random kind of sampling. You want to typically avoid corners because they may get over or under fertilized and they may not be representative of the field. We want to just avoid taking them all in one straight line here. That nice random sample is going to provide you with the most field representative results. Now after you have all those cores, you want to mix up your sample in the pail. You want to take a sub-sample of that. That subsample should be about a cup of soil. Uh, you don't want to send them like a really small kind of thimble. You want to send that full uh, cup there because it's going to allow them to perform the, the tests that they need in an accurate manner. Uh, step five, which is probably the most annoying of all the steps sometimes, is to fill out the appropriate paperwork. Uh, label the bags with your sample, the title, as well as your name, mail it to the lab. Uh, one hint, if you are mailing a lot of samples to the lab, you might consider flat rate boxes because um, if it fits, it ships, and soil can be very heavy. Uh, so if you get charged by the weight, that can um, increase your cost. So if you're ship shipping a lot, they can fit into one of the flat rate boxes. That might be an advantageous and cost-effective way to go. So when filling out your paperwork, though, you want to be sure that there's a lot of test options, typically. Which one's best for me? Typically, you could look at what they have. Necessarily, you don't want to go with the cheapest or all of them. You want to look at what's going to fit your conditions. What's going to give you the most amount, not of information, just the most amount of useful information. Uh, start with determining why you're testing your sample. Do you have any background on the, not, on the area? You're just looking for the general nutrient profile, or just the pH, uh, looking for soluble salts, what, organic matter, Again, those are a lot of options there. When in doubt, you can always contact the lab, but just in general, you're looking at typically that standard soil test will give you great base information, and then there's typically more details available from there.